You're on. Today's scripture meditation is Psalms 95, 6, and 7, 8. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The first song is in, hy- in the celebration hymnal 630, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And if it's okay, we'll do all three verses. Yes. Every 
Amazing verse. Yes, do you want to do all five verses? Three forty-three. Um, or should I just do it two? <sighs> probably the just the first three and the fifth. The first five. Yes, ma'am. And the fifth. Okay. One, two, three, and five. Yeah. Three forty-three. There we go. Uh-uh, mine don't. Oh, I'm in four. That's my 344. Okay. There we go. I'm <laughs> on page. <laughs>
being close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. On the imitation, it's after he's preached, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Us up in word of prayer. Why don't you please? Word of prayer. prayer. Oh. Dear Father, thank you for this day, Lord, for your presence here with us. We want to thank you, Father, for being our Savior, Father, and everything that you do for us. Thank you for all your blessings, Lord. Just be with Chris, Father, as he brings the message, Lord. Just be with our first responders, Father, and all those that are on our prayer list, Lord. You know there are many needs, Lord. You are the ultimate position, Lord. Thank you especially for your son, Jesus, and what he did on that cross. All this we ask in your precious and holy name, Father. Amen. 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 Okay. So today we're going to go over the fruit of the Spirit, at least a, a few of them, what that looks like. Um, we classify the fruit of the Spirit as what a individual looks like but I think it's more than that I think that's what should classify the church as well um, the church being a group of individuals should have the same like mind and same characteristics major characteristics as the individuals that participate in quick list of fruit of the spirit love joy Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. What's what's the scripture? Uh, that is Galatians five twenty two. Yes, 22 and 23. Um, but what does that look like in the church? Um, what is the attributes of a healthy church? What is the attributes of an unhealthy church? What does that look like in comparison? Um, do we need to have these figured out before God can bless the church a lot of people come to church don't come to church because they think their life has to be in order before they can approach God well I'll come to church when I take care of fill in the blank however that looks like or uh, church will not accept me because I look like such and such or I do such and such. Um, if that's the case, that's a very unhealthy perspective of church. The church should be more of a hospital, not a courtroom. Um, there is many churches out there that don't do it right. They see someone walk in and just because they look different, they don't talk to them. Or there is... A, almost a stereotype of what a church should look like and if I don't fit that stereotype then I'm not welcome there was a song uh, a few years ago uh, the lyrics go like I come in the back door quietly sink in and I can feel the stare of a thousand faces a sea of faces staring at me um, the, the the person that, that wanted to come to church they were drawn to church 
but the church people made him feel uncomfortable enough where they didn't want to go back. Um, there was another lyric in there where the gentleman looked so different that he wasn't welcome. And that's not what a church should look like. We hear all the horror stories of what church is and what church shouldn't look like rather than what we think they should. Uh, we hear all the bad stories of across the nation. So-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. This church did this, and that church did that. But we never f hear the good ones. Very rare. Um, I talked to a gentleman a few months ago that was from Nigeria. Their version of church looks way different than ours. It was interesting to hear his conversation have that conversation with them and hear what that looked like in church um, they went the before church started it was only once a month that they did church in the main building every other time it was in people's houses and it wasn't a why don't you come over and have church it was by the way we're here we're going to have church <laughs> uh, almost inviting themselves <laughs> I think that's much needed. Uh, <coughs> the person that's, I don't feel like going, and I don't want to interrupt anything, and I don't want to be a bother, shouldn't feel that way. And I think the only way to solve that is, hey, we're going over to your house. <laughs> uh, Zacchaeus in Scripture he was curious and he was on the outskirts of what was going on and Jesus said hey by the way why don't you get down to the, out of that tree I'm going to your house um, now America operates a little different we think that church is a building and that we should meet in that building to operate as church but scripture says church is the people the group uh, yes, I think we need to have a place to meet. Yes, I think that we should meet in that place. But is the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit characterized to your church? So, John thirteen thirty four. I'm not wanting to step on people's toes but if it does oh well so a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I loved you but ye but that ye also love one another by this that all men shall know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another as Christ loved the church I ask a lot of questions in our in my youth group of, okay explain that to me what does that look like and sometimes I get some good feedback um, I asked that to a couple of my teenagers and he he said one of them brought out Paul you read through the story of Paul he was beaten he was in prison he was shipwrecked he abandoned he was house arrest and he still had love for the fellow man now we're talking about one another as the church but I think you can still take Paul as an example because he gave of himself for the church there were several situations he didn't have to go where he did now God told him he needed to go but he could have been like Jonah and ran I'd hate to see what Jonah that would look like with Paul but he loved people as simple as that Paul loved people and he knew God loved people too so uh, as as we watch the story of Paul laid out uh, we see that the love that he had was a sacrificial love 
uh, and it was more than take the shirt off your back. Anybody can offer take the shirt off your back. The love that the that it, it's here is not a self-destructive love either. I'm going to hurt myself to show you that I love you. No, it's I'm going to love you till it hurts. There's a difference. This is a agape love. This is a self-sacrificial love. Not as what do I get out of this? It's what can I give of myself to further you? Um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He gave. So this love has an action attached to it. Um, it's making sure the least of you is taken care of. Now, whatever that looks like. Uh, in our work, Westover, we have a few, a group of few men that pretty much take care of the church. Anything that needs to happen, uh, we get approached saying, hey, this is what we have going on. Okay, what do you need? It's not even a matter of how much you need, it's what do you need? Because sometimes it's uh, going helping somebody. This last week, I had a, two gentlemen offer. I talked to him Wednesday. I didn't have AC at the house. Thursday night, we hooked up AC. Took time out of their day to make sure I'm taken care of. Now, it was a two-person job, to, one on the inside, one on the outside, making sure it's all right. But it was, they had other things they could have done. They had other places they could have been. Probably needed to be one of them, I know for sure. But you take care of each other. So, and I know this is an older generation church that sometimes money's tight. Sometimes physical labor is not an option. But there's other things that could be done. Um... There are different ministries that God has given each person. My ministry is my shop, first and foremost. I run an automotive shop. If I can't help the people that come through those doors, why am I in business? I don't know what each of y'all's ministry is, but each one of you has a different ministry. Um, whatever that looks like, Whatever that feels like, sounds like, I don't know. Are you doing what you need to be doing, though, is the better question. It's not a matter of how much I do. It's a matter of I do what I can, where I can, when I can. Because when you go to how much I can, it's a checklist in a bragging right God's not in, doesn't look at bragging rights very kindly who are you kind of attitude is what he gets when he says well I've done this for the kingdom and I've done this for the kingdom and but it's the quiet guy in the back corner that feeds the youth group on Wednesday night that doesn't say anything or it's the guy that comes out mows the lawn Saturday morning and doesn't say anything it's the guy that comes in and cleans the the offices and doesn't say anything and someone goes what happened hey okay uh, me and my wife do some of that stuff and we don't want the recognition we just want to make sure things are taken care of
So, God has given you a territory as well. First and foremost of the church is the neighborhood. What are we doing as a church to reach this neighborhood? Yes, we had vacation Bible school. Yes, we walked the neighborhood. But is that all we're doing? I don't know. I'm not here on a consistent basis to know that. But could there be more done? I'd love to, next time I come back, have 40 or 50 people here. You know, it's people need Jesus. And in order to give them Jesus, you have to go outside your comfort zone a lot of times. You have to, and it's amazing how God works this, because you think you're really good where you're at. Things are going good. And God tells you to do something that's, but God, I don't want to do that. But God, that's not how things are normally done. And we have this but God moments. But God, I don't I don't like this. But God, this hurts. I'm not comfortable doing this. Or why am I going here? We forget how to love. Because the God is trying to show who, whoever he's sending you to his love through you now it may be as simple as go down the road and talk to uh, the farmer down the road kind of deal but and it doesn't have to be a conversation about God but it's the act of you be willing and obedient who knows what could come of that conversation or you see someone walking down the road and they, they drop stuff. I, I don't know what that looks like. You know there's a neighbor moving in. Go help them. Go introduce yourself. Go give them something almost like a peace offering. Uh, back years ago, the housewarming gift was a loaf of bread, home-baked loaf of bread. You put time and effort into your gift to give means you care <laughs> amazing how time equals caring you care about somebody enough you'll show some sort of time with that is your life an example of the gospel in that manner though um, you have a nursing home right around the corner my aunt used to work there, actually, and uh, she knew of a group that came in and sang on Sundays, and I'm pretty sure it was someone from this church, but I don't know of anyone that does it here recently. Now, I know we have an opportunity to do that here again coming up if it hasn't started already. Yeah, it starts, I think, the 16th of this month. But what was in the gap in between? Someone didn't stand in the gap in that middle between now till whenever that stopped. Someone dropped the ball. As Christians, we're called to go and do. Show love is an action. Agape love is an action that we are commanded to go and show love. So, can people look at your life and say, I want what they have? That love, that caring, compassionate. Can you be characterized by joy along with that? When the storms of life hit you and they beat you up so bad you don't want to get up out of bed, do you still have joy? I've been there. My wife's been there. We've been beat up so bad we didn't want to go anywhere. We didn't. I gave up on church. I did. Nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. 
and they're so unloving I don't want to deal with them and it took God several times calling to me going hey I need you <coughs> because because the unloving manner in that place you need to be the loving manner in that place be the offset now things are different and I think it was more of my perspective of how things were it's amazing when you're in a tight situation the tough that beyond what life can throw at you throws you in that depression state nothing around you looks as what it really is it's almost like it's an optical illusion uh, you get you have a bad day at work and every job from then on throughout you start the day off with a bad job and every job from then on is a broken bolt and it irritates you or it's a attitude from a customer that just irritates you and you're always you're looking for the bad from then on because you started the day off in a bad mood something puts you in that bad mood and you look the rest of the day as if the world's out to get me well that's not quite the case that's your perspective and a lot of Christians need to pull their head out of the sand and realize that God may have sent them to that situation to be the light in that situation instead of the uh, doom and gloom and look like you're sucking on lemons all day long it's hard to keep joy it really is because when life keeps hitting you and hitting you and knocks you down and you get back up and it knocks you down again it's hard to find joy but if you don't have that joy you have a serious problem between you and God and it needs to be addressed now there's a couple of things that can help with that and action is part of it so in Hebrews 10 24 let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the matter of some is but exhorting one another and so much more the days are approaching so the day that you're having a bad day here's the action to start getting you out of that bad day go find someone that needs encouragement and it may hurt that's that hurt love that hurts because I don't want to encourage someone when I'm, when I'm in a bad day but that calls for me to look beyond myself and to understand I'm not the only one out there and I'm not the only one having a bad day and I'm probably not the worst one situation that I can find either I've got a roof over my head I've got clothes wearing I've got shoes I've got AC at the house now I've got food on the table God has blessed me enough to help others but I don't see that in my bad mood in my attitude and my selfishness at that moment yes it's selfishness because it's oh woe is me the world is falling and I can't do nothing pull your head out of the sand go help somebody else you'd be amazed on 
how long that you start helping and you start going wow I do have it pretty good when you realize the needs of others is when you realize how much you have been given yes it is so encouraging one another it's an action being stated uh, I think the NASB what does it say instead of provoke to love? Uh, let's see. In verse 24? Yes. Let's see. And let's consider how to encourage one another in love and good deeds. So, how to encourage one another to love and good deeds. And mine uses the stir up love. In to order to stir up love. In order to stir up love. Uh, that means someone's having a bad day and you stir up love within them. But, on the other side of that, what does that, what does that look like to provoke? Because scripture also says don't provoke your children. To wrath. To wrath. So you can push too far and provoke to wrath instead of to love. Now, that next verse states not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. That puts church on a high priority list. That should be in your top three. I need to make it to church this week. Not, I need to put food on the table, or I need to make it to work, or the car needs an oil change, and oh my, i got so much to do this week, and I can't seem to catch up, and I'm going to do it Sunday because I'm so far behind on all my chores. Uh, this is a command to be at church. Because, how are you supposed to encourage others if you ain't around them? How, are you gonna expect to, how can you expect to encourage others when you don't receive, go and receive your own encouragement? That, that's part of it. Because if I am not here to be encouraged, I'm not here to encourage. And my face may be what someone's looking for. Oh, wow. Of all this week, they've had that bad week, and they're still here. Man, that's amazing. Maybe I don't have it so bad. But, here again, other people need to know your, a little bit about your life, that sharing life together. Not bragging about how bad of a week you've had, but being honest about it. Hey, my life sucks this week. I've had this and this and this. I need prayer. And it's not being on your high horse telling them, hey, you need to go to church. Christians seem to get on their high horse about a lot of different things. And then when they miss that one day of church, it all falls apart because so-and-so says that you need to go to church and you're not in church either. Huh. But it's not a matter of being on a high horse it's a matter of my life should look different it's amazing how much that word comes up today is my life people should see it in my life when you're having that bad day and you don't let it bother you people go how do you do that uh, you see I've got this group I go to that they, they help take care of me and I help take care of them. And it's a bunch of good friends. Not once in there did I say church, but that's what it is. It's my support system. It's my lifeline to recenter everything. 
if everyone knew what happens on this side of the ministry instead of what y'all see, you'd be going, that's hard. I don't want no part of that. Uh, the women's Bible study of the ones that make the excuses to go and go, you're thinking, but you really need this this week. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's the uh, making excuses for everything that don't want to go. I don't. Church is very important to me. I built my entire life around it. Uh, anywhere from Monday through Monday is my day off, and I'm still up at church with having lunch with pastor, trying to get a game plan for the next couple of weeks in youth. Uh, any minute I get phone calls from youth group going, hey, I need this, this, this week. Can you help? Yeah. <laughs> I got a youth right now that he wants to buy a motorcycle in El Paso. <laughs> Says, hey, when can we go? Uh, I don't know. Let me get back with you. <laughs> Do I have time to go? Probably not. Will I make time to go? Probably. I, I most definitely will. But it's me giving of myself to make sure someone else is taken care of. Now, is it a need that he absolutely needs taken care of? No. He has a car. He wants a bike because it's cheaper. Okay. I get it. Boys and their toys. Um, but if I make excuses for everything I don't want to do, Will anyone come and ask me for something they need? No. Probably not. But if I don't make a big deal of what they come and ask me for, it'll build a friendship and a relationship to where I don't blow it out of proportion and they're still comfortable coming and talking to me. So if I find out that Mary Jane down the road needs a a hot water heater and I just happen to have a hot water heater and I don't make a big deal of it I kind of just go over there and drop it off in her porch and me and her have a long conversation of hey I don't need nothing back for this it's extra what I have and I know you need it you think she'll be a little bit more willing to ask for something when she needs it because she's been two weeks without a hot water heater and it's kind of hard, hard to wash dishes and clothes and take a shower take a shower and cold cold water but she's embarrassed to ask because <coughs> people make big deal of it but in the same token how many times are we willing to ask for things that we need because I'm not too prideful for asking for help for AC work. I can't do it by myself. Someone needs that blessing to come out and help me. The guy that come out and helped me, I told him thank you. And I really needed that. Get it done. And the look on his face when he told me, no problem, anything for a brother, told me he needed that blessing more than I did. Not to say, hey, I helped Chris go put an AC in. For him to say, hey, I helped a brother out this week. Provoke to good works. Someone should be able to look at that and go, I understand it. I need more. I need to do more. And it's not a matter of, you know, he, when I asked Sean to go get that, to help me with that, it wasn't a matter of, man, that was so easy, I, I, I had it all under control. I guarantee you if he, if you were to ask him why he would come out to help, the glory somehow points to God. It's not a matter of what I can do. It's a matter of how I can further the kingdom. 
because I don't want my name in any of it. I don't. But I want people to be able to say, wow, you serve an amazing God if he can do that. So let's go to from helping to working together because that's what that looks like. Helping each other is working together. So what happens when things don't go good? So Ephesians 4.32. This kind of recenters on making it work together for a while, not just every now and then. 4.32. Be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So when things go crazy and say Sean dropped an AC out the back of the window. <laughs> Oops, I come over to help and I'm making things worse. Uh, it doesn't say I get to hold that against him and make him pay for it. And we need to make this. He needs to make this right. No, 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 no. Things happen in ministry. People's feelings get hurt. People get hurt. Church hurt is the one hurt that nobody has a re has a solution to. It's the one hurt that you can hold against each other forever. But I don't understand that. I don't like that. But it is true. It is. It is true. But here it says that you need to forgive one another. That's what keeps it unified and working together. Because as... I help Johnny, and Johnny helps Charlie, and Charlie helps David, and David comes back and helps me. Somewhere along the lines, when I helped Johnny, I did something wrong, and it followed around. And now David knows about it, and he doesn't want that to happen again. So he's very cautious about what he says with me. Well, if I hurt Johnny, I need to go ask his forgiveness, and it cleans that whole circle up, not just between me and Johnny. It reverts back to how well we get along with each other. If someone was to talk about the person that we just don't get along with, does it bring a bitter, hostile environment? So, I don't from, from that situation, something happens between me and Johnny, and we go our separate ways. And David comes along, and in his just in his conversation, Johnny comes up in the conversation, and I turn bitter and hostile real quick. Does that mean I have a problem? Most definitely. I need to go forgive Johnny for whatever wasn't between me and David it was between me and Johnny but it's still there it still lingers unresolved conflict turns into bitterness sometimes that's a couple hour conflict sometimes it's a year sometimes it's a decade sometimes that conflict a, is a lifetime I've got a few friends that they don't talk to their parents. I got one that doesn't talk to their dad because of conflict that happened 25 years ago. And every time you mention dad, it's a totally different person than what I'm used to working with. And it changes the hot, goes to a very hostile work environment real quick, especially when you're doing ministry. And how well you do ministry, well, let's put it this way. If I've got a baseball team that everybody gets along with each other and they work and they don't have any problems with each other versus a team that the batter don't like the pitcher and the first baseman don't like the batter and nobody likes each other, who's going to win that competition if they play against each other? The ones that work together. The ones that can work together. Ministry is the same way. 
if you've got a church secretary that don't get along with the pastor and the pastor don't get along with the youth minister and the youth minister don't get along with the pastor's wife the pastor's wife don't want to get along with the deacons and who's going to see a loving church not me I'm going to be going y'all have fun over there I'm going to go find me someone that actually cares about me because y'all are too busy fighting amongst yourselves and you can see how that goes back to love love is the basis of all of it the unforgiving Christian that can't get over things is the stumbling block for the new Christian trying to learn so what about the old church that hurts you before this one you get along with people there still What, well, what about last Sunday? You get along with people everywhere from there? Does it fall into your Monday and feed into your work schedule? Cause you to have a bad mood all week? Forgiveness does not mean weakness. And it does not mean letting people take advantage of you. It does mean bitterness is not allowed in church. And it needs to be dealt with if it's in church. It means, forgiveness means learning how to get along with them just because I don't agree with them. Because work still needs to get done. Last time I looked, not everyone in this neighborhood was a Christian. I can promise you that. There's work to be done. You could probably go right across the street over there and find plenty of work that needs to be done. If I'm willing to forgive my neighbor for what he did wrong with me, Maybe that I'm willing to forgive others and not hold their lifestyle against them when they come into the door. And means that I don't look at them weird when they slip in the back door because I don't have anything going on in my heart. See, what that song didn't say was the lady that got all the stairs coming in the back door the people staring had a problem in their heart and that they probably had a problem with their brother that was sitting next to him and they were taken out on her because they were I'm in church I'm in the world I'm in church I'm in the world joy should be a prospect of everything we do Sunday all the way to next Sunday, not just Sunday. It means Monday morning when you go back to work. No, I don't want to be at work. But it is where I need to be. And it is where I need to learn how to help people. <coughs> so last scripture for today Ephesians 5.21 one that nobody really likes to hear submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God now this is not a slave master relationship this is a friend to friend not wanting to see someone work so much they burn themselves out and I have a feeling that's happened here many times in our church it was the deacons 
working themselves so much doing everything they burnt themselves out and what that looked like eventually the deacons forgot how to love and I I can tell you stories after stories of churches all across America with the same story someone in ministry is carrying the whole congregation doing everything and then they want and people wonder why they get bitter and hostile when nobody wants to work with them or willing to work with them and then we did a mission trip a few years ago 30 people in the church one person willing to work with me doing the mission trip setting everything up doing this doing that it was hard I questioned if I do another mission trip now we went back and it was totally different but in that moment that submit yourself to one another it's very discouraging on this side of ministry when you see people that's not willing to help each other like I said it's not a slave to slave slave to master it's a friend to friend it's I have something you need and I'm willing to give it to you and I'm willing to oh you need to, me to watch the kids while you and your husband go out on a date to reconnect okay it's oh you're fixing to make a big big trip because you lost someone in the family it's me coming over and you need an oil change let me go do that it's not even a matter of do you need an oil change let me see your keys let me go get this taken care of. Let me make sure you're ready to do what you need to do. Amazing how all of this sounds like love. And it's amazing how all of this sounds like the fruit of the Spirit. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. So in Ephesians 5.21, the next verse talks about marriage. And I think they're connected. No, I'm not married to you, but the same attitude from friend to friend should apply. Our friendship should have a harmony and kindness to it. Our friendship should be a respect as the husband has for the wife because she works all day too. The wife submitting to the husband because he knows how things should go should be the same aspect as friend to friend. I should have a respect for you and, and, and a, a joy enough to learn how to take care of things that you need in the submission part because this is a commandment submit yourselves one to another now there's several others throughout scripture but for today's antics we will just cover this small section um, but there's an attitude behind all this as well When someone asks you to help, and you say, I'm too busy for it, it puts an attitude in other people's minds instantly. Because what they're asking is usually small and insignificant. 
I'm asking 20 minutes of your time and you're too busy for it, then why do I need you? Why am I wasting my time with you? And you can see how that attitude progresses very quickly. Enough to, I'm not going to ask you anything else and I'm going to, I probably won't even ask anyone from the church to do anything anymore because I, can, I I'm just better off doing it on my own. And deep down, we've all had those situations. Here again, there goes forgiveness back. You need to keep that in realm with that. Forgive one another. I need to be able to understand you're, you have things going on, and I need to be a little bit more patient. But that also means I don't need to nag you every chance I get hey I need the AC hooked up hey I need the AC hooked up hey eventually they'll come out and get the AC hooked up sometimes we have to learn how to do things on our own too but without the attitude of bitterness I've actually dealt with that recently I ask a friend of mine to come out and help and I'm too busy I'm too busy I started getting frustrated and I, I'll do it myself I walked out there and half of it was already done he didn't say anything he didn't tell me hey I'll be out there hey by the way this is done hey my mind I instantly got in the hostile mode with him thinking I'm not very significant to this guy I called him a brother and we have a problem he took time out of his day. Who knows how late of a day it was for him. He works 12-hour days plus whatever else he does. It's, it's, he's no stranger till 9, 10 o'clock before he rolls in the house and just collapses in bed. And I had that unforgiveness attitude toward him, which turned into bitterness. And I, God directed me really quick, hey, <laughs> you got a problem. Especially when I walk out there and it's, it's done. Oh my, I screwed up God. I'm sorry. Now, the church is the most, is the one organization that's taking advantage of the most. And it's been that way for a long, long time. But it shouldn't hinder you from making a difference in the world that you live in. Now, I'm not talking the big giant world, Earth. I'm talking about your daily routine. So, Susie drops the ch children off at the daycare every day, same day. It shouldn't, she got hurt the day before. It shouldn't keep her from being kind and generous and joyful when she drops off the kids in her small section of the world. She interacts with this lady every day that she drops the kids off with. And if that lady sees that she's not a Christian, Susie claims to be a Christian, why is she acting like it? That's not saying you can't have a bad day. But your circle that you affect makes a big difference in affecting and reaching the lost. I'd love to see this church flourish, have 40, 50 people, but as a church, are you in position to receive the blessings that that takes? Are you willing to put in the work that that takes? Because God's not going to bless you with something you're not ready for. There are small steps to ensure that you're ready for it. Are you doing those? Are you willing to let go of yourself and let God be the first thing 
that everyone sees in you. And don't forget, it's not it's it's okay to ask for help. We're all in this together. It's a group effort. Don't worry. Just because Susie screwed up doesn't mean that people don't see it in me and I go approach Susie and we have a good conversation and people see that we're good now. Or that situation with Johnny. Me and Johnny getting in a fight going our separate ways. I'm responsible for me. I take care of me. It takes small steps to be in position for blessing. But it starts with you. The church as a whole has nothing to do with your personal actions. But your personal actions affect everything the church looks at. And how it is portrayed. Because how many times have you heard, well, so-and-so is a Christian and the church did that? Hey, no, so-and-so did that. It's not the church's fault. But they tie that to the church instantly. I hear stories of pastors all the time going rogue. That wasn't the church. That was just that one man. But the church gets tied to it. But it all starts with you. Can you be the difference to change this world? Just say a 10 block radius around this church. Can people say, hey, I want to be there. I like those people. I can't about my church. I love the people I'm with. I love to do ministry with them. They work so well together with me because they understand this. I've got a small group that I work with. I got As youth minister, I'm responsible for roughly about 30 teenagers. Now they all don't show up to church, but I make sure I take care of them. But I also have a team that takes care of me that I put together. I put the best and brightest minds that do this ministry together with me. Has previous experience. Someone I can go to, shoot ideas off of, to encourage me when things ain't, man, you had a bad week. I can tell. Keep it up. Keep going. Keep moving. Not what I want to hear at that moment, but they're willing to give me. Maybe it starts with building a team around yourself to encourage you to keep moving. Maybe it's building a team to keep the church moving. I don't know what that looks like. But Matthew 5.16 does state, Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. a team effort and we're all responsible for each other but you have to learn how to work in harmony and you have to learn how to keep moving forward and not let things get a little tougher skin sometimes that thick skin I can't call you ugly and you melt down I'm sorry it don't work that way because you'll be called all kinds of things Christ said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Expect it. But you keep you still need to keep moving forward. And that is all I have. So, my lovely wife will come to invitation. It'll be 596 in the celebration hymn. It'll be 596. I don't even know what the name of the song is. Probably just one or two verses will be fine. Did you catch that? Yes, I can do just the, I can do just the first verse. Okay. okay. 